Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with an opinion video, and as you've read in the title, I don't recommend large format. Um, and I'll describe why I don't recommend large format, and it's not that I don't enjoy it, and I don't think people could enjoy it, but I think people have a tendency to jump into the bigger is better too fast when they start into film photography. So I'll go with myself because it's the best example I have. And it's what I did. Um, when you get back, uh, when you get into film photography, be it you've always shot film photography or you're new to it today, we all start with a 35 millimeter camera. Most times, even though most people nowadays are jumping quite quickly to medium format because it does give that different field of view, different depth of field, uh, a very different view from a digital camera. That, and I always compare this to digital cameras because full frame digital cameras are mainstream nowadays. You can buy them for a couple hundred dollars from the Canon 5D classic to a couple thousand for the latest like A7R 2 or 3 and things like that. And those have amazing renditions, great cameras, but they're 35 millimeter film and as much, I mean, sorry, it's 35 millimeter sensors and full frame and the depth of field is limited and I'll air quote limited because it's a super powerful tool, nothing against it. But people like seeing things that are different. Film is different. Film is different because it's organic. Film just slows you down. You got to put the roll of the film that you're going to send it to the lab, wait a couple of weeks, they send you the results. You love them, you hate them, whatever. It's a love hate relationship with film but people tend to bump into medium format very fast because suddenly you can shoot square and there's all this quality and there's 3D rendering and the viewfinder on Hasselblad blows your brains out and so on. And the next step is like, so what is next? And there's so many cameras all over the world, like medium format 35, uh, large format. So the next thing is like, oh wait, have you heard of this thing large format? And they're like, what do you mean? They're like, oh yeah, you use these cameras that you put your head under dark cloth and have the accordion and it bellows and you do this thing and like you can even do movements and do the perspective control and so on which kind of like at the moment is like when you try to think of the size of the universe like your head just doesn't understand what's going on with large format and a lot of people jump into it the problem with large format is that it's a great format, it's a great way to take pictures, but it requires so much more preparation as a photographer, as a user, as a consumer, as a professional, whatever you want to call it. Um, 35 millimeter and 120 film, medium format film, are standardized. There is a specific film that goes into specific camera systems and they all talk their own language. So if you go Pentax 6x7, you buy Pentax 6x7 glass and you buy 120 film, black and white, color negative slides, that's it. You just shoot, you enjoy, that's it. You go uh, Hasselblad, you choose a Hasselblad, a 500CM or 501C or you know the ELM or whatever you want, super wide, and it has its set of lenses, set of backs, that's it. Mamiya, da, da, they're all the same. They all have their family of cameras, brands, just like a Sony system, E-mount, EF-mount, Nikon-mount, all these systems, Pentax K-mount, whatever it is in 35. But large format has sort of like a non-standard thing. There is standards, but they're kind of all can work together, but not all work together. So I can grab this uh, four by five Chamonix that I have in the background here set on purpose. And I can grab a lens designed for eight by 10. And they weren't designed for a specific format. They're designed to project a circle, an image circle. And I can mount it on that and shoot and I can do all the movements I want and all that. But maybe I go ahead and like everybody I know have bought the 105 millimeter lens because it's cheap. And then you mount it on that and you're like, oh, you look in the ground glass, it looks pretty good. You shoot and then you get this heavy vignetting and you're like, what the hell happened? Well, that lens is mostly specified for six by nine cameras. There are field and large format six by nine cameras. The debate on large format or not is a debate, but I think they're large format cameras. They use little sheet film or some roll film. And those lenses are designed for that. Same thing goes the other way. Maybe you go all big and buy the Intrepid 8x10, affordable 8x10 camera. Oh my God, so inexpensive, half the price of a Hasselblad. And I can, you know, I can shoot this stuff that Sally Mann shoots and all this stuff or uh, any favorite photographer you have. And you pick it up and you buy an, I don't know, 200 mil, 210 millimeter lens. You put it on your camera, you look through it. You don't really know much. You shoot, boom, same vignette, what's happening? It's a four by five uh, image circle, five by seven, some of them, so on. So then there's film holders. Film holders like this one, four by five film holder, 
hold two sheets of film, there's the mistakes of how to load it, and 35 and 120 are pretty much foolproof. 120 does have that some cameras take it one way or the other way. You've got to shoot towards the backing paper, you've got to shoot towards uh, the, you know, the other side, depending on the camera, you know, you know what I mean. I make videos about it. But one, uh, four by five, you've got to know how to load them. So how is it? Oh, the notch. Oh, wait, first thing, you need a dark tent or a dark room or a bathroom or under your sheets or whatever you want. You can be in Finland where it's dark all the time, but you need to do that. Suddenly, you got to go buy film. Film selection of four by five is more expensive, first of all, obviously more real estate, but also less options. Suddenly, you slide film is not that available. You can't buy Kodak Gold in four by five. You can't buy Cinestill in four by five. Come on, Cinestill, please make it. You can't buy certain things in four by five, so you're limited. But then there's a the thing. These sheets go in here, and there's two per holder. These sheets will get dust, and that's the thing with large format. 35 millimeter and 120, it's almost like every single shot you have a new sensor. But in one in four by five, yes, every single shot you have a new sensor, let's say, but this is loaded by you in your house, in your sitting room, you might have a cat, you might have kids, you might eat cookies while you load film holders, you're gonna get you know crumbs or whatever in here. And there are tricks like tapping it down and like keeping it in and so on. But that requires a discipline. And that's what I'm trying to say. Large format cameras have a discipline. You have to have a procedure. There's so many things that you have to do in this order. And there's no automatic, like, automatic anything except for the shutter. Everything else is basically done by you. From inserting the film holder to pulling the right uh, dark slide. No film in this one. So how many times have I put my film holder and this is the side towards the camera. And instead of pulling this one out, I go ahead and I pull the selfie mode and suddenly I've exposed the sheet of film, there goes 10, 12 dollars or euros worth of film to waste. And that's the thing, to me, the reason I don't recommend large format for uh, people is because people tend to go too fast. They go from, and that's why I kind of put this little uh, line, oh sorry, line of shadow, is people start at 35, 120, boom, four by five, eight by 10. And that speed is dangerous. You need to have a discipline mentally. You need to understand exposure. You need to understand how film works. You need to understand the whole thing. Plus then carrying your gear outside requires a tripod every single time pretty much. Requires a camera, a dark cloth, a loop, cable release, more than one cable release because you lose them or you, you break them. Ben Horn can tell you all about that. Things like that. And then this has to go back home. There's leaks in the uh, film holder sometimes. There's dust. Sometimes you load them incorrectly. You had to send them to a lab. Do it yourself. Same thing. Loading these into tanks is hard. It sometimes, you know, scratches the emulsion. You, all these kinds of issues. And my main concern with people getting into large format is no, Nico, I'm not, like, I'm not better than you. I'm not saying that you're not capable. I'm saying that you'll burn out quite fast. And that burn out will make you throw your large format stuff away, sell it on eBay or Craigslist or to a store, or whatever, friend, and walk away from large format when it's a great thing. It's an amazing tool, but you have to be ready. So I've had so many people ask me, hey, Nico, I want to get into large format. And I've said straight up, you know what? No. And they're like, I'm not getting good results with my Hasselblad. I'm having issues with developing. I'm like, no way. Don't get into large format. They're like, but, but I mean, like, it looks like the perfect thing. And they're looking at Alex Soth's work and you know, uh, all these Stephen Shore, and they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. But they don't understand that if they're not getting good results in 120 film, they're probably gonna get bad results in large format film. And that cost of entry is so much higher, you know, as I said, mentioned before. So that's why I don't recommend large format at the beginning. You gotta kinda take your paces, and it's kinda like, I compare it to when you wanna make some, I'd say, dumb purchase that you kind of like, oh, get, get all burned out and I'm, I don't know, I want to buy that new thing or I want to buy that camera and like give yourself some time to cool it down. If in three months you still want it, maybe think about it again. In three months again, you still want it, maybe that's the time. Kind of a similar thing. I guess people say that for tattoos. I can't do that, but like same thing. Like if it's a recurring thought that comes again, it comes again, it comes again, maybe you're ready for it, but do take it into consideration that it's a mouthful of like shooting large format. It requires a lot of, you know, 
commitment. And that commitment, if you're humble, if you're ready to learn, to take your paces, to take notes, to go like step by step, cock the shutter, close the shutter, insert the film holder, test the shutter. If it shoots, it means it's closed. If it doesn't shoot, it's open, and you've already pulled the dark slide, you're exposing the film forever, you made a mistake. Get another film holder. Oh, I don't know if I shot two shots, but I've only marked one side of the dark slide uh, as shot. So what do you do? I go ahead and I develop them both without exposing any more. I'd rather have a blank shoot, uh, sheet of film than do double exposures, things like that. So I'm not trying to deter anybody from getting into large format. What I'm trying to say is get into it responsibly, get into it when you're ready, meditate it, give yourself time to learn the th the art of film photography and watch videos, watch, I don't know, Nick Carver, Matt Mirage has some amazing content in large format, uh, Todd Corral, like uh, just watch all that stuff, get familiar to it, and then think about it. Maybe start purchasing little by little, like a better tripod, a better tripod head. Like one thing, tripod heads, three axis tripod heads. Don't get a ball head. They're extremely annoying and I know some people can do it but they're pretty annoying so get yourself a three-way head this is a Manfrotto 410 works great but those things like go slowly ramping up your 120 your your 35 and the same give yourself time to enjoy the different formats don't go all in I went all in with a speed graphic I was lucky enough that I was pretty geeky and I kind of didn't get too many mistakes but like we all have I've had mistakes I've developed film and screwed six sheets at a time and things like that and it's, it's so expensive, it's so frustrating. And that last thing I want you is to get burned from large format and walk away. I want you to enjoy it when it's ready. It's like, you know, a nice wine, a nice drink that you have to let it mature. So that's all I have to say. I would love to hear your guys' opinion. Honestly, I think a lot of people will have experience with getting into large format, not liking it, getting into large format, loving it, maybe not being ready, mistakes and so on. So please leave a comment. As always, these videos are basically supported by you guys. So either Patreons or PayPal donations, you can go ahead, leave something or not. You can just leave a comment that's also free. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Bye.